big news, controversial news in the preset world. You familiar with, uh, 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 we met him a couple years ago at Nashville, uh, E. Edwards, uh, elevation guy, very talented guitar player. Um, I consider E a friend. I haven't talked to him in, in a little while. I no? don't recall. You guys, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but E plays for elevation. Uh, he's a music director there. I think that might be his title. Anyway, phenomenal guitar player. Okay. Played a Red Elliot for a long time. Ooh, Elliot guitars are awesome. For some reason, I think Bradford owns that guitar now. But anyway, he played it. It was made for the Taylor Swift Red Tour. Anyway. Oh, I do remember talking to this guy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Incredible player. Incredible player. He has kind of gone quad cortex. And he started selling his preset. And it got a lot oh, of commotion. Yeah. Because he sort of recreated his whole rig that he's playing on stuff. Now, listen. Uh, there's a guy named David... Uh, who's been on a bunch of these, I think his last name's Liotta. I might be saying it wrong. He's a Nashville guy now. I just saw him playing on Broadway a couple weeks ago. Moved here. Excellent guitar player. Been on a bunch of the stuff. I know he's used some Tone Junkie profiles on some Elevation recordings. Um, I, you know, E a long time was like, you know, they're using some Kempers. This guy's using this. Everyone's, you know, kind of going digital at this, you know, time. And they're finding themselves on this unit, this unit. E's landed on the quad cortex, right? And um, he's kind of rebuilt his rig in the digital world. uh, Captured some pedals of his, captured some amps. And sort of went, this is what I'm using. I don't know if he's used this QC on this or that or what. Mm -hmm. But he's recreated the rig he's using, right? And he's playing all the time. And they're always doing live stuff. And mm-hmm. you can follow E on Instagram. You'll see what he's doing. He puts this up a hundred dollars. So it's just it's a quad cortex only. It's one preset for a hundred bucks. Now, I gotta say this. I'm glad we started a minute ago with everybody copies Tone Junkie. It garnered so much buzz. It was the best marketing he could have done. Because mm. a lot of people have put stuff out. You know, mm. and you know, it's like, how do you get, I, I, there were so many, there were posts on every group I saw, mm. not about the launch of this thing, but the guys, price. did you see this? It's a hundred bucks. Right, the price. Now I'll give you my take in a minute because mm. I got a take on this, mm-hmm. but it carried the word through this sort of preset world that he had made some stuff. It was only on the quad cortex, not on everything else. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was what he was using. And, um, you know, people shared a lot of opinions. Thoughts. Thoughts. Because a lot of people were like sticker shock at the price. I'll give you my take in a second. Um, I mean, look, this is like Apple's strategy, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Like, you know, you you can go buy a stick of like RAM for like pennies on the dollar apple charges like four hundred dollars to upgrade your ram yes right yes <laughs> right it's the same thing right it's the same thing you could get anywhere else because where's the value in apple in it's the in, ram it's no, in it's, that extra in the incremental amount of ram no it's in the software right and it's in the whole you know it's, it's in, in it's the value of the whole it's package the whole together package together and you're getting your and so they're they're totally fine mm-hmm. charging 10x what everyone else charges yeah and they say if you don't want it, don't buy it. Yeah, right, mm. <laughs> right. So as like a product strategy, I totally understand it, mm-hmm. and I'm 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 here for it. Yeah, I think that there's probably a lot of people that bought it and are super happy with it. Yeah, there and are some people. People have posted about it and said it it feels premium. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. Mm-hmm. Could you spend far less and get basically the same quality at? A number of different places, probably. Sure, sure, mm. sure. It's not like he built the amps. Right. I mean, I don't know what, right. what it's made of, but, also, but like you could you could probably get a similar, you know what I mean? Like, there's a weird thing that happens with like anything that's fashionable is sure. that the actual value of the thing is irrelevant. Hmm. <laughs> yes. It's all about like yes. who made it, you know. Yeah. Look, yeah. look at the Stanley Cup, right? We. Yeah, there's a million other Stanley Cup like variants that aren't Stanley that cost $10. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. those are the popular ones. Those For whatever are, reason. Yeah. Those are the ones. And By the way, I'm starting a fashion trend. You see the straw? 
I not really the like clear that. straw. I this like is that. the new fashion trend that I'm starting. Hmm, I like that. Many that way, women like... stopping me in public. You guys want to know a hack? I'm a happily married man, but <laughs> if you want women to stop you in public, start carrying around a Stanley and mismatch your straw because all of a sudden women will see that and go, well, I'm behind on a trend. What is that? <laughs> Yeah. Where are you getting that? How do I get back on? Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think so. Like, would I buy it? Probably not. But is there a market for it? I'm sure. Is yeah. he wrong or bad for doing that? Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Mm-hmm. Suze, what's your take? Very similar to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I, I don't know this person. And yeah. I don't I don't have any desire to play his presets for some other reason. You know, it's like, oh, I have to have that sound yeah, versus right. all these other sounds, yeah. you know? So that's part of it. But also for someone to introduce himself to the market like that, I would think they would go lower, not higher mm-hmm. than everyone else. To say, hey, you don't know me. Check these out for next to nothing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, I like these. And then now he can kind of place them a little bit higher next time. But coming out, yeah, I mean, that... Well, he's well very, known. I mean, he's, he's, he is like kind of the guy at Elevation, it seems Well, not like to right me. Now. I mean, you asked my opinion. So like, I, I don't... Yeah. It's not like a, you know... Tom York came out with his presets. I was like, man, I'd love to have Tom York sound. Okay, so, like, you know. Yeah, so this is interesting because I, mm-hmm. I view it I view it differently. I view it like this. If Slash tomorrow came out with his presets for the Quad Cortex, no one would scoff at it being 100 bucks. And the people who are buying these are playing the music that E records, that E plays live on, that E writes the parts for. Right. They, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can watch him do this stuff on Instagram. He's getting the tone he's getting that he's putting on these tracks, on these live recordings, on whatever. No one would scoff at Slash doing that, but I would argue more people are copying his mm-hmm. tone than are copying Slash's this weekend. Right. You know what I mean? For sure. I mean, that's hard because probably every cover band is going to play like Sweet Child of Mine. But you know what I'm saying. But right? also, not, mm-hmm. Slash it's, it's, is a legend. Yes. And, and it mm-hmm. is not, and they're not playing a full Guns N' Roses set. Right. That's a little bit right. Like, yeah. I, and I mm. think that's true of a lot of worship guys. I think so. To me, well, can, I go if you just you just in this genre. To me, I'm like he's the slash, Hislop's mm. the slash. He's the Lucather. He's the what? These mm. are the guys you're copying their tone. So oh, if that. one of them comes out and goes, <laughs> don't even bother copying the tone. Here's the tone I use. Right. Then it's kind of like. Okay, hundred bucks doesn't seem crazy at all. Okay, but now I'm gonna argue my I'm gonna argue the exact opposite. Wait, let me my, say one more thing before okay. I say that. And I will say this. Practically, he has to fill all these him uh Himself. on the quad cortex right. manually. Which, which is, is also I think another thing that has been brought up. It's like, hey, I gotta do all these manually. It's, it's not worth my time. It's gotta be worth it. Right. Also, I would say this, he knows it's a smaller market. He's not slash. Right. There's not gonna be ten thousand. So for him to do this effort, there may only be uh, you know, several hundred people that will bother buying it. Right. Uh, not 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 saying anything about that. Just that I don't think he's willing to go on the campaign to make. You know what I mean? It's I don't, not like he's going to go buy a Maserati with us money. No, and, and no, mm-hmm. and I don't think he's going to spend spend uh, uh, make this his full time job to go start mm-hmm. making videos promoting this stuff. You're right. right. It's just right. to me, it's like a celebrity person in this thing. Yeah. Right. And some people go, celebrities or you got a church, you know. But but well, no, <clears> I mean. People are going after his sound. He's made the sound. He puts it out. Yeah. To me, it's like if it was Slash or anybody else, no one would would bat an eye at it. To me, it's the same thing. Okay, but let me argue the opposite point of what I argued earlier. Mm-hmm. He's actually insane for charging this much. <laughs> because you can go buy Tom Morello's uh-huh. pack. These are all Neural DSP plugins. You can buy Tom Morello's yeah. thing. You can buy Rabia's thing. You can buy John Petrucci's thing. Mm-hmm. You can buy... Mateo Sasato's thing, those are all sixty dollars. Yeah, but you can't buy the sound of elevation on the QC website. You no, can't but what buy- I'm saying is that there are well known people, more well known across the guitar verse than he is, yeah, who don't charge that much for arguably a lot more software. Mm-hmm. A ton more. Yeah, a ton one, more. One preset. Yeah. One preset versus three amps, three cabs, an a bunch of effects, plug-in suite, like an yeah. entire plug-in suite, right? So all I'm yeah. saying is that mm. we do have examples of guitar legends charging a lot less for a lot more, and people are happy with that. Yeah, I so, don't, mm. I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, it's granted, they're not, on the, they're not little, on the Quad Cortex. It's a little different because they're making a product to sell. It's, it might not actually be what they use. 
or like the, the point of them involving themselves in it is to sell the product. Yeah, but it like, is what they use. Well, it's it's profiles of their listen, of their rigs. Yeah, but it, Vi sorry. always uses what he used until the contract ran out and someone else gave him a check and then magically Vi had another amp from another. No, totally. Like another amp got made for him, right? right. And then he always used the Vi amp. My point, John but, Petrucci obviously uses his signature right. Mesa Bushi sure, live, sure. but the but the sounds in the plugin are of that amp. Yes, yes. So yeah. he kind of does. Yeah. And I think you said that no one would bat an eye if Slash came out with one preset. I think they would. I think no one would bat an eye if he came out with his entire catalog. Like if, you know, I'm a big Jimmy Eat World fan. They use Fractal Live. If they came out with one song and charged $100 for it, I would laugh at that. Yeah, no, but not but one if, song. But because... if they came out, hold on, let me finish. So if they came out with their entire set list. Yeah, right. And it had 17 songs, all what they used live, and that was right. $100. But that's, that, but that is know. it because it's the rig he plays. Like Jimmy World probably goes out there mm. and plays Fractal, and I don't know how they organize it. But yeah. it's it. I mean, if they gave you, here's what we play. If they our, had like the Bleed American pack, it was like here's all the sounds from Bleed American. But or imagine or it's what a they rig. use live, what they right. travel live with. If I, it's all about like what I'm getting versus what I'm spending. If yeah. I'm spending a hundred dollars to get one preset with a couple captures in it. And there's like a couple presets, and that's it. What, what Even if, if he uses all that on yeah. on every song, I'm I'm still sp like the dollar to preset ratio is way too low. You know? That's a weird way to look that's at. That's why it. I would laugh. That's at a weird it, way to look you know? at it because or I think that's an interesting way to look at it because that's like, what if I mean, what if the you like, what if they are a person that has a relatively simple rig that doesn't like they can't turn it into a million presets because it is straightforward mm -hmm. right yeah, like it is an analog rig that they were playing i, think I mean simpler. when you have an analog rig like like if, if we if we step out of the digital world for a second mm -hmm. and we say i'm going to build a rig a, a rig with 12 pedals mm -hmm. it's not that hard to replicate all of that in one rig in a quad cortex no. your delay has a couple different settings like unless right. you're full mm -hmm. midi which a lot of people aren't if you're on a big sky you might be accessing a couple different ones but I mean, what? How many are you really going to use in a set? If it's your, if you're writing the stuff, you, you probably got three or four sounds you go to. It's the same thinking of like if you release a Kemper pack with six profiles, that's different than a '65 collection with 160 profiles. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be different costs. So if I'm, yeah. I wouldn't spend a hundred dollars for a BC15 pack with five profiles and a hundred dollars for a Purple Plexi pack with 60 profiles or 100 profiles. Right. That's a different amount of work. Different amount of setting up, like all the, the things that, yeah, all the things Jimmy World would have to do to deliver me an entire set, an hour and a half of playing, yeah, versus what he had to do to deliver me one preset. The difference, though, is that it's price. the The difference, though, is that Tone Junkie. So if you're look, say you're looking at Tone Junkie or whoever, you're looking at Michael Britt or whatever. Mm -hmm. If like if if Michael Britt's average cost per profile remains the same or relatively the same, mm -hmm. right? Some packs are cheaper, but they have fewer things. Some packs are more expensive. As long as he's internally consistent, then you're not going to feel like you're getting ripped off. Right. It's it's all of a sudden, if one was the same price, but way less stuff, you'd be like, hey. What's so special about that what's one? What's so special about this one? Yeah. This guy, he only has the one preset for sale. I think it's just the one, yeah. <laughs> so so the next one might be 300. So, so, it's, so it's like... <laughs> You know, I don't, but that's, yeah. I mean, there I isn't a next one. There I, isn't a next one. This right. is what he's using. Like this right. is the whole rig. Yeah, but it's, until so he it's not one sound. It. It's not one profile. It's not the equivalent of one profile or something. Or right. like it's like, or one, like one amp board. sound. It's like one rig, right? Yeah, it's his rig. I mean, he, it's yeah, his it's whole his rig. rig. He's got some mm -hmm. pedals in there that he captured. Couple he's got amps. some amps. IRs. He's got his his stuff. So I, if his rig was one capture of one amp and one king of tone. That was two things in this preset. Is that a hundred dollars? You're it, that's a, a, that's you're reducing it to the absurd, right? Which is right. like which is like of but course. But it proves the point of saying like if it's not his it, rig. It doesn't that I prove want, the point because it's know? not. It, I get what you're saying, but mm -hmm. that's that's not what is actually being given because he doesn't play that right. If it, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be someone doing what he's doing with so little in his sound, and um, that's that's the point. It's like the preset. You get what I'm saying? No, but the they preset haven't seen the John. They haven't seen the John Two pack yet. His rig, though. <laughs> yeah, how much is that going to be? His rig doesn't do one thing. That's what I'm saying. Of course, if the rig did one thing, like like right. if Willie Nelson released <laughs> released the acoustic guitar sound, it would be one pack, right? And and that would be kind of silly, but. It is a whole guitar rig. It encompasses. But would Willie Nelson's uh, profile get you high while you were playing it? <laughs> that would be. That's worth money. <laughs> I would pay $100. <laughs> it, it, it encompasses many sounds, what I'm saying. And the thing is, 
the, the proof is in the pudding. You can pull up an elevation record and listen to it. And so then you could package that as, hey, look, there's 16 songs. I can give you 16 downloads. He yeah. plays just that rig. Yeah. So like if the value is I need to get the 16, I need to get this sound or I need to get these songs. Well, if everything comes from that rig, which I think is more or less true if you're on an analog rig, like there's <clears throat> not as much variation. Now, you may be getting, I mean, one thing that may just be the thing is like, like where I'm, where I play and probably where you guys have been playing, the tempo comes via MIDI. You, you may not get that, right? No? Okay. So that's pretty advanced, bro. Is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you can run, well, the other tracks have that, right? You can send it in, uh, I think Ableton does that. There's just a little MIDI cable that sits next to the power and the XLRs they give me. That's fancy. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I don't like to use it actually because I like tapping half time if I want it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Especially on like an ambient patch. Yeah. If I want a really big, I know that if I I know that I can go half time and my del everything gets longer. Yeah, you can't do that the other way. You know, I mean, I guess you can. Can I? All right. So I I argued both sides. Yeah. My actual opinion is that I think it's totally within his right to do, but I don't think it would be worth it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much he's selling. I mean, he might sell a yeah. lot or a little. I, I don't know. I think also, and I think you touched on it earlier, he knows the market that he knows the market that's going to buy this thing. And it's small, but it's mostly guys with more money than average. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, though, in this world, like this is the world where if you just make a pedal but change the color to black, people somehow want it more? Like, do you think in this world, having the hundred dollar price tag provides the sort of, yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. You download it. It sounds good. And then that's the confirmation bias. If that, that fuels people to go on and say, right. Yes, I want, like, yeah. it's great. Like people were saying it's premium or it sounds it's, premium. It I premium, assure yeah. you, it's probably not <laughs> any more premium than the stuff they can well, get for yeah, cheaper. Yeah. And it's like, know? it's right. like, yeah, I hope it, I hope it feels premium. It for should price, after, it you, better, after yeah. you did that. Yeah. Yes. Or else. I don't think he'd be able to do this twice or three times or four times. I think he yeah. would, I think he would run yeah. out of, it's a shtick the first time people he, talk about it. He would run yeah. out of oomph at some point. Cause people would be like, man, I bought the last two. They're and not, I wonder how the word of mouth is for all the people that did buy it and were disappointed by it. Right. Like I should never have spent a hundred dollars. So it's just a curiosity, yeah, right? even not just know? disappointed, even just like, apathetic toward it like yeah it's fine i wouldn't do it again yeah this other one's 15 bucks and it gets you 90 percent of the yeah way. yeah i don't know yeah i agree that it's, i'm not saying he shouldn't have done that i just think it's ridiculous and there's i would never pay it but yeah. it's not that doesn't mean he's wrong yeah. you know yeah i wonder i feel like we have a bit of a bias though because look we don't pay for presets <laughs> sure we make right. a lot of them we make yeah. a lot of them sure. yeah so i think maybe it's like you know it's a little bit of it's a little bit of bias where it's like no that doesn't seem like it's worth it but i think it also like we're behind the curtain a little bit too of like what goes into making presets how they're created maybe that's the, true. the work that it takes and i'm mm -hmm. sitting here going like look I, i've made a bunch of presets yeah and to say this one preset with yes with his signature sound or what he used on some record. Right. If to get access to that one sound is a hundred dollars. Right. You know, that's where it's because of, I, I guess there's a mystery. If you don't know what goes into it or what's behind there, I want to check it out. Right. The, you will pay it to, I don't think, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think someone would do it three more times, you know? No, but we might find out. I yeah. All I know is that a hundred dollars compared to like a Veritas guitar is a drop in the bucket. Mm. So yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> you gotta yeah, get the rest of that's what I meant. Too. Like he knows like his audience. Little. Like it's yeah. not yeah. that many people, and a lot of these guys are playing five. They're six used to overpaying guitars. for gear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and maybe so maybe you know, there's a thought of like if if I sell, you know, uh, if I sell a hundred of them, it's ten grand, for sure. Right, and then it's like. Okay, this is great. Like yeah. that's what I think I'll do, but maybe he sells a thousand. Hey, more power to you. Now we can get a Maserati. Yeah, yeah. It is a lot of work filling these QC things. Uh, it's a lot of it's just a lot of headache. Mm. You know, they've made it really difficult to do. 
So I understand charging a pre. I mean, really, that's why uh, I've like made all the QC packs kind of on the more expensive side, just so you buy the bundle, mm -hmm. just so I only have to sit down and send you the whole bundle because I rather have more to sit there and click through to send mm. than to have many, many more orders of different names. And it just, mm. you know, so, and then, you know, sometimes people get it on a flash sale or something. I don't think E's going to do any flash sales. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he does. 5% off. I hope he does. But yeah. I'm going to say, I, <laughs> I hope think... he does like a hundred people, or the first 10 people get a hundred percent off sales. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to say, I think, I think in the worship world right now, there's there's hislop which has become tone factor right and um you know in my opinion that dilutes actually a little bit of the specialness of like this is what david uses mm. now there's so much stuff available it's a little it's hard to know what are you using mm. and i think anyway he's a guy who tries a lot of different stuff so you know constantly experimenting mm. but there's very few opportunities. Hedroff did a little thing. There's very few opportunities in the worship world right now to like go to the source and get the sound. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I know Lincoln Brewster's working on some stuff. Um, and I uh, remember about, him? I always forget about Lincoln yeah. Brewster. <laughs> and he's got and 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 um, he's got a signature Strat. He really does. I mean, he does, and he's got a lot of amps, and he's got a lot of stuff. And um, I had heard he was working on stuff a long time ago, and then I heard recently he might be working on some stuff. I'm sure he has a lot of stuff made. It's just a matter of, mm. you know, get, you know, it's just a matter of like, how do you package stuff and get a website to get, you know, everyone's had modelers forever and y you make stuff, you know, especially him. He makes stuff to go on tour and stuff. He's probably been on a million tours with different guitars and mm -hmm. different events and all sorts of stuff. He's probably made a million things now. It's just, you know, what do you want to make available? You know, do you want to make it available and then do what Hislop did, which is turn it into a whole catalog of stuff that, you know, goes past what you're using, or do you want to do what E's doing and go, here's the one thing I use, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to put a big premium on it. Hey, not you everyone's know? trying to profile the world, man. No. Some people are just... <laughs> this is the opposite approach. I profiled <laughs> one thing, but charged the same amount as 10 things. <laughs> I think there's six <laughs> captures in his defense in there. There's six wow. captures. In six? A, uh, Amp captures or six? I think there's amps and pedals, and I think the total wow. is six. Ooh. If it was fifty bucks, I would have the same opinion. Dang, that's a lot of money. Yeah, you For know, six. double the money. Okay, given the rate of inflation, mm -hmm. when will a hundred dollars per download be reasonable? Mm. <laughs> Twenty thirty seven. <laughs> that's a lot. I, think it's, I, think, I think it's sooner than that. I think yeah. it's sooner than that. He's living sooner. in the future. At, at this trajectory, it's like three weeks from now. If it comes with like this year, yeah. Huh? Oh man! If it comes with like a carton of eggs, it'll be. <laughs> oh wow! 